This Christmas, give yourself some peace of mind with emergency food storage from My Patriot Supply. Go to preparewithscout.com to get your four-week food kit, which includes 2,000 calories per day of tasty freeze-dried meals, snacks, and drinks, all with a 25-year shelf life. This set is currently marked down to 167 bucks, and it comes with free two-day shipping. Also, check out their two-week kit for only 79 bucks. Every order helps me produce more videos like this one, so go to preparewithscout.com today and stock up on some peace of mind. Yeah, it's going wide, man. That site's really hard. It is, right? With the slide lock being recessed in there like it is, I have a hard time even trying to manipulate that slide lock. But the sights are probably the deal killer for you. Definitely. So we're shooting the SIG P365 SAS version. That's the SIG anti-snag version of the gun. And I'm going to shoot this with the standard version of the 365 here in a second. Now I'm going to shoot a different kind of ammo through the standard SIG simply because it's an in-house rental. They don't want me shooting my outside ammo. So for the rented SIG, we're shooting this Federal Syntec. Okay, that is a standard P365 over there. Standard sights, standard controls, so forth. Now we're going to start off left side top. What I'll try to do is two five shot groups. I want to thank the guys at gunprime.com for getting this gun in my hands for some testing and evaluation. Now, at this point, I'm thoroughly convinced that the standard SIG P365 is a very solid gun and a good choice for concealed carry. But after SIG came out with this SAS version, this anti-snag version of the gun, and everybody had some, you know, kind of conflicting thoughts about it, well, I wanted to get one in hand to see what it was all about, to see how it actually worked. Uh, it's very flat. They've taken away the slide stop. They've taken away the takedown lever, and they've taken away the sights and given us this very strange sighting solution uh, in their place. Um, I'm seeing a lot of different reports about how it works, and I wanted to get it in hand to see what I thought of it. I was ma I managed to get a couple of friends to shoot it as well, so their input will also be in this video. Okay. You know, we've got enough of this Syntec, but I'm just going to keep using that through my standard or through the, uh, the SAS and just see that, uh, see that it's not ammo related, that the differences in the way these shots place and how easy this gun is to shoot has nothing to do with ammo. It's got everything to do with those sights. I'll show you here in a second. Doesn't that look like lipstick? Yeah, it does. So this is the sights system that is on the SAS version of the P365. It's very weird. You have to look through the back of this. There's a little ring and a little dot, which you may or may not be able to see. Or you focus on, but that's the entire sighting system. It's hard to use. All right, we're gonna do five, five, and five again. So these FT bullseye sights, as SIG calls them, um, are fiber optic and tritium. There's a ring and a dot, and you sort of nest that dot inside of the ring. Now, I have found that sighting system to be pretty difficult to use at first. Now, I put several rounds, I want to say 50 to 60, maybe close to 100 rounds through the gun uh, when I first took it out. And then in this outing, I managed to, I guess, do a little better with it than I did the first time out. And that's primarily because I had trained my eye a little bit on how it was supposed to be used. Even so, I have to say, this is a very unusual sighting system. And for a concealed carry gun that's already very small, already very flat, and really didn't have any snag problems to begin with, 
it, I'm kind of confused as to why Sig felt like this was something they needed to do to this gun. And even having established some familiarity with these sights and how they work, I still don't feel like I shoot this SIG as well as I do the standard SIG P365. So we've got here, this is all the standard. These are all the SAS. And this is one, two, three. So there's a slight progression where it gets a little bit better when I get to the third one on the standard SIG. It actually gets worse on the SAS as we move down. This one's got that one flyer, I guess we could call it. So some of them are kind of tightly grouped. This one's not bad, but this one got really big. And I think that has to do with my eyes sort of getting fatigued from trying to maintain that weird focus that I'm not accustomed to. Now, before I continue with my thoughts on this gun, I want to show you the experience and the thoughts of a couple other guys that I was shooting with uh, at this particular uh, range on this particular day. So I was at Guns and Gear shooting range in Idaho Falls, Idaho, um, and there were a couple of guys there who are range masters and employees, uh, as far as I can tell. Uh, and they were actually running an event for a different gun that they had on a promo. They saw that I was shooting this SIG SAS, were very interested in it, so I immediately said, well, I'd like to hear your feedback, so come on over here and put a few rounds through it. They each put, I want to say, three, two to three magazines through the gun, maybe a little bit more, um, and I feel in that time, they got enough experience with it to determine how this gun compares to the standard uh, P365, which they both have some pretty good experience with. They've seen this gun, the SAS, on their counters and shown it to some customers, but this is their first time shooting it. What do you think so far? The sight would definitely take some getting used to. So were you going for the top right? No, as silly as it's gonna sound, center left. Center left, okay. It's weird, right? It's really difficult to get um, focused on that sight. Don't you agree? It'd be like when I switched over to a red dot on some of my pistols. Yeah. It took, there was a hundred round learning curve. I oh. think you probably got about the same thing here. Put another lower left. Okay. Now I'll echo what that guy just said about these sights and the learning curve. If you spend a lot of time shooting this gun, you will figure these sights out and you will become mildly proficient with them. I don't know that you'll ever be as good with these sights or at least speaking about myself, I don't think I'll ever be as good with these sights as I am with standard post and notch sights. They just are more intuitive to me, and I think they're more intuitive to the average shooter. So if this is going to be your first gun, maybe your first concealed carry or something like that, I wouldn't recommend it. I'd say go with something more standard, more common, more traditional, because you'll be able to learn on it more easily um, and you'll be able to point and shoot with a little bit more intuitiveness. I won't be buying this gun, but if you think you might, make sure you check it out at the link in the pinned comment down below. Gun Prime is a place to get it and they help support this channel, so show them some love. That still wasn't good. But. <laughs> The regular 365, I really do like that one. It's always been a great gun. That SAS, I'm not sold. Yeah. Um, as he was saying before, with certain uh, red dots, you might take, it might be like a 100 round learning curve. That may be true of the SIG SAS. And so if you're going to get into this thinking that, yeah, this is going to be easier, it's going to be perfectly fine, it's going to be everything I'm used to, it's not. You need to spend a lot of time shooting it, really get used to those sights. I've gotten kind of used to the sights, but I wouldn't say that I'm anywhere near as comfortable with these sights as I am with standard three, you know, a front post and a notch in the rear. Those are just far easier to use and far more intuitive. So I guess my feelings on the SIG P365 SAS is that it's very different from the standard one. It's not better. Um, and for some people, it might be worse. So, there you go.